In this Sunday's Gospel reading, the anonymous author we call Matthew presents the contrasting opinions of John the Baptist and Jesus about each other. John is confused about Jesus' identity, but Jesus is very certain about John's identity and status. Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. When John the Dipper heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And truly honorable is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. I place myself under the curse, I say to you. Among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Dipper. Yet the least in the kingdom of Sky Vault is greater than he. Who is Jesus? That's what John's question is about, and it's pretty clear. Is Jesus the one who is to come, or not? Its meaning is far from clear. In Jesus' time, there was no uniform or even dominant Judean idea about the Messiah. Messiah was like Heinz 57 variety. Ask two first century Israelites about who and what the Messiah was, and you'd get at least three different opinions. There wasn't even a uniform understanding of Judean customs. The multiplicity of ideas in this period prompts contemporary scholars to talk about first century Judeanisms and their messiahs, and don't erroneously confuse first century Judeanisms with later Jewish thought. To the question, are you the one who is to come? The Matthean Jesus answer is equally ambiguous. If he is thinking about Isaiah chapter 35, his list of credentials could be interpreted as powerful deeds a Messiah might do. If instead he is thinking of the Psalms of Solomon chapter 17, a composition dating to the first century before the Common Era, then the Matthean Jesus has in mind the ideal Judean king who is primarily a military and political leader. The safest opinion here is that Jesus accepts the designation, one who is to come, whatever that means. What about Jesus' credentials? Professional physicians in Jesus' time preferred to talk about illnesses rather than treat them. A physician who failed to heal a sick person risked being put to death for lack of success. Such physicians are rarely mentioned in the New Testament, and when they are, it's mainly in sarcastic proverbs, commonly repeated in Mediterranean literature. Among the peasants, however, folk healers willing to use their hands and risk failure were very common. Jesus was one of these folk healers. Small wonder that Jesus reminds the imprisoned and confused John the Dipper about his success as a prophet healer. But hold on, isn't Jesus boasting and thereby violating the honor rules of his Mediterranean culture? Honor is your standing in the pecking order of the village. Together with the public recognition of that, there is no such thing as claiming honor that the village does not recognize. To claim honor that the village does not recognize is to be uppity, brash, a braggart, a fool. Honor is public reputation in the village, and everybody in the village knows exactly where you stand 
in the pecking order. Isn't a Mediterranean person obliged to deny compliments in cultural humility? And avoid the appearance of grasping for honor? So as not to impinge on someone else's honor? The Mathean Jesus anticipates the charge and protects himself against it by concluding with a beatitude. Truly honorable and esteemed is the one who takes no offense at my rightful claim to honor. And who is John the Dunker or John the Dipper? Jesus asks, what did you go out to see, John or the grass, the reed? The Greek word describes a reed that grew only in Egypt and from which pens were made. There is no doubt, however, that the evangelists are referring to the tall and graceful Arundodonax, which grows abundantly and luxuriously along the streams in the Jordan Valley. Its light and feathery head is sensitive to the slightest breeze. Its straight and strong stem was used as a walking stick or as a measuring rod and other useful items. Possibly, Jesus intended to contrast the unbending convictions of John with the resilient and flexible grass. The Mathean Jesus' second probing question, contrasting John's rough Elijah-like clothing with soft garments, might be an intentional comparison of the prophet with the weak-willed Herod Antipas, who would put John to death later on. This Sunday's Advent Gospel reading concludes with Jesus' affirmation that John is more than a prophet, and his honor rating, based on his birth, is unsurpassed. But, Jesus adds, the least in forthcoming Israelite theocracy, the Kingdom of Sky Vault, has a higher honor rating than even John. At this point, the anonymous author named Matthew leaves matters up in the air. Is John the Baptist part of the reign of God? Or excluded from it? The Mathean Jesus concludes with the ultimate ambiguity. If you are willing to accept it, John is Elijah who is to come. Folks, there is no evidence that in Israel of the first century common era, it was widely known or commonly accepted that Elijah was to be a forerunner of the Messiah. Such an idea seems to be a messianist original. The messianists, of course, first century Israelites who followed Jesus and anachronistically called New Testament Christians. It seems that the messianists adapted Malachi chapter 4 verses 5 through 6 and placed them on Jesus' lips long after he died. Are you confused with this? Americans may recall Senator Howard Baker's persistent question in the Watergate hearings. What did the president know and when did he know it? This Bible Alive reflection on this Advent Gospel selection demonstrates that Scripture does not easily yield a satisfying answer to such a question. What did Jesus know, and when did he know it? It shouldn't be a surprise that we don't have a satisfying answer, folks. We are Christians, after all, by faith, and not by force of irrefutable evidence. Sorry, fundamentalists!